This is your USMNT Abroad midweek update from February 14th to February 17th of 2022. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Mission V, and welcome to a channel favorite, USMNT Abroad series, where every Friday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the midweek, and every Monday we update you on how the Yanks did abroad over the weekend. And yes, today's episode will be a lot shorter. There were less Americans playing during the midweek, but on Monday, we will have a much longer one as we will be updating on all the performances of Americans over the weekend that play abroad. So yeah, if you enjoy this type of content, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out. And most important, hit the notification bell because subscriptions don't really do much on YouTube anymore. All right, but before we start this video, I do have two important announcements. Well, the first one is next week we will release the interview with Adrian Simon Gill, the young American that's one of the top prospects in the Barcelona Academy, La Masia in Spain. Plays as a central midfielder. You'll get to know him a little bit better. I think this is the first U.S. interview that he has had. So don't miss out on that. He's currently 16, a big-time prospect that we definitely should keep an eye on. Now, the other big announcement is we will have a big friend of the channel back. Herc Gomez will be back next week here on the channel for an interview where we're going to talk about U.S. soccer versus Mexico. Has the United States surpassed Mexico? We'll find out next week when we bring in Herc Gomez. Okay, but I'm talking too much. Let's go to the updates and let's start the Champions League games. Let's play the intro. All right, so there were two Americans involved in the Champions League during the midweek. Let's go through the one that actually played. So let's start with Brendan Aronson from RB Salzburg for now. On Wednesday, Brendan Aronson started and went the full 90 minutes for Salzburg during their 1-1 draw with Bayern in the Champions League knockout rounds. And just one reminder right here, this was a home game for them and there's no more away goals rule. So the away goals don't have a different weight right at the final decision of both legs. In regards to his performance, Brendan balled out. His touches looked sharp, keeping the ball close. He was able to draw fouls, was able to create a lot of opportunities, including getting the assist for RB Salzburg's goal with a beautiful little flick. A very nice flick, by the way, where Adamu was able to score a beautiful goal that got Salzburg the league, but then Bayern would go on to score a late goal to tie this game. Now, Brendan Aronson had one assist, 50 touches, 75% passing accuracy, five key passes in this game, one shot on target he did almost score, also won four out of nine ground duels and one out of five aerial duels. Now, the RB Salzburg move was not a big move for Brendan at the time, but it was the right one. Now, the right one is a big move, and he will likely get a transfer during the summer. Also, that right there was something that I tweeted, and someone from the mainstream media that I will not mention, I will not say who it was, kind of copied it and put it in his own words. But I mean, what are we doing? Now, before we move on to the video, make sure to comment down below. Do you want us to make a video breaking down Brendan Aronson's evolution from the Philly days and the RB Salzburg days? Because he has been impressing me. If you want us to do a breakdown on that, a full video dedicated to Brendan, let us know in the comment section. I'll gladly do so. Diving into stats, facts, everything that I can. The other American involved in the Champions League was Zach Steffen from Manchester City. But Zach Steffen was not even on the bench for Man City during their midweek 5-0 win over Sporting, the current Portuguese champions. And 5-0 was a surprise to me. I actually thought Sporting could make this a game and I was very much wrong. As for next week, we will have Christian Pulisic versus Timothy Weya on Tuesday for the Champions League knockout rounds. And we will also have Weston McKinney play for Juventus as they face Villarreal on Tuesday. So Tuesday Tuesday the day is the day for Americans abroad on the Champions League next week. Keep an eye on that. All right, now off to the Europa League Americans. And the first one will be Serginho Das from Barcelona. And <laughs> it was kind of weird to see Barcelona in the Europa League. On Thursday, Das started off on the bench for Barcelona and came in at the 81st minute during their 1-1 draw with Napoli in the Europa League. Now, Dest was originally expected to start as Dani Alves is not even registered for the Europa League. But Xavi went with Mingueza, which... I really don't rate that player. I don't rate Mingueza. And it made me wonder, why did he start him over Serginho Dest? And I know Serginho Dest is far from perfect, but I still believe he's a better option for the right back. However, after doing extensive research, very extensive research, and with the help of Dustin, I was able to find out that the reason is Mingueza was born in Catalonia. That's why he started. Okay, it wasn't extensive. I actually did a 10-second Google search, but... It seems like Barcelona at times does prioritize players born in Catalonia or Spain, which it's essentially the same, I think, kind of. 
it's a little confusing there. Now, Des was in for very little minutes, so he had 14 touches, 100% passing accuracy out of 9 passes, managed to get a key pass, and that was with a little bit over 15 minutes in the field as the ref did add an extra 8 minutes for this one. Next up in the Europa League is Giovanni Reina versus James Sands as Borussia Dortmund faced Rangers. On Thursday, Reina started off on the bench and came in at halftime for Dortmund, while Sands started off on the bench as well and came in at the 66th minute for Rangers. As for the game, Rangers defeated Dortmund in their first leg in Germany, 4-2. But hey, Dortmund lost by two goals only and had 65% ball possession. So by Greg Berhalter's standards, that was a dominant performance. In regards to Gio Reyna, he played on the wing, which definitely not my favorite position for Gio Reyna. But let's go through his stats real quick. Gio had 46 touches, two key passes, won three out of eight ground duels, and also had 84% passing accuracy. The last American in Europa League is Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig. On Thursday, Tyler Adams started for Leipzig and was subbed off at halftime during their 2-2 draw with Real Sociedad for the first leg. Now, I was not able to watch this game, but apparently he played as a central center back on a back three. But he was subbed off early right at halftime which could have been precaution as he's returning from injury could have been tactical there have been no reports of any injury so i guess no news is good news all right now let's go to the americans that played in the europa conference league the third division of the champions league first one up is conrad de la fuente from olympique marseille and conrad is back on Thursday, Conrad started and played 69 minutes for Marseille during their 3-1 win against Carabag in the Europa Conference League. And yes, Sampaoli did do some rotation, which might have led to Conrad starting. But regardless, it's good to have him back. Conrad looked dangerous in one-on-one -on -one situations, but again, the crossing, the finishing, the long shots, those need to improve, man, if he wants to take his game to the next level. Conrad also did take the corner that led to the first goal. The only reason he didn't get the assist was because Malik scored off the rebound off a header that Conrad assisted. And that header, by the way, was from Malik himself getting the rebound from his own header. So personally, I would I would count that as an assist. Next player up is Cameron Carter Vickers from Celtic. On Thursday, CCV starred and went to full 90 minutes for Celtic during their 3-1 home loss to Bota Glimt, a Norwegian club. So that was not good. It's just the first leg, but they're probably not going to go through the next round considering this was also a home game. So CCV had no blame in the first and the third goal. However, the second goal, he could have done a better job. He missed tackles the ball, which leaves Pellegrino wide open to score the second goal of the match. In terms of his stats, he did okay if you only look at that category. CCV had 131 touches, 90% passing accuracy, won 4 out of 4 ground duels, 2 out of 2 aerial duels, also had 3 clearances, 1 block shot, and 1 tackle. Alright, now let's go through the players that didn't play in the European or continental competitions. And if you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button. It's a great way to support this series. Let's start with Jonathan Gomez, that he finally made his debut for Real Sociedad B in La Liga 2. On Monday, Jonathan Gomez made his debut by starting and playing a full 90 minutes for Real Sociedad B during their 3-2 loss to Ponferradina in La Liga 2. Now, I was not able to watch a La Liga 2 game, but based off reports, Gomez had a strong game. He was able to draw PK for Real Sociedad's first goal on the match, and it seemed that he also had a solid performance. Not bad for his debut. Gomez for this one had one clearance, two interceptions, one tackle, won four out of four ground duels, won one out of three aerial duels while having 50 touches and 87% passing accuracy. He's also just in 18, and considering Shaq Moore plays at La Liga 2 and did okay in Gold Cup, I think Gomez might be closer and closer to get a look with the U.S. men's national team in June during Nations League. That's obviously if he accepts the call. If he accepts the call and plays in Nation League, he would be cap tight. So we don't know if he would accept that. I'm just saying that it seems like he probably will be ready for a call right there. Next up is Richie Ledesma from PSV or Young PSV. Early in the week on Monday, Ledesma was with Young PSV, which is essentially their reserves team. And unfortunately, he had a muscle injury and had to leave the game. How severe and for how long he'll be out is yet to be known. It's unfortunate for a player that had just come back from a major ACL injury just two months ago. All right, now Christian Ramirez from Aberdeen in Scotland. On Tuesday, Christian Ramirez started and went to full 90 minutes for Aberdeen during their 1-1 draw with St. Johnstone during the Scottish Premiership. Now, the Argentine-American Alan Sonora from Independiente. On Tuesday, Alan Sonora started and was subbed off at the 58th minute during Independiente's 1-0 win over Arsenal Sarandí in Argentina. Second game of the season and second time he gets subbed off prior to the 60th minute could be due to fitness as he is considered a key player for this team he is their 10 so i'm assuming it's for fitness for now he should pick up good form and be getting more minutes in the future 
Next up is Mark McKenzie, and he stayed a full 90 minutes on the bench for Genk during the midweek. So back to normal. He's been struggling in minutes. From time, it's, from time to time, he gets minutes, but I don't know what's going on with Mark, man. Usually, he barely starts. That's the truth and barely gets minutes, and he shouldn't be in the March camp. That's, that's all I have to say. Now, let's talk about Johnny Cardoso from Internacional. On Wednesday, Johnny started for the second game in a row for Internacional during their 1-1 draw with Brazil. For this one, Johnny went the full 90 minutes. Now look, first, Brazil is the name of the club. It's not the national team, and uh, don't get too excited with these two starts yet. This is the state tournament for Rio Grande do Sul, and it's very common for Brazilian clubs to play young players to gain experience, as this is a weaker tournament. But not all starters were the young players, so there is reason to be optimistic in regards to Johnny. All right, everyone, that does it for this episode. Don't forget to smash that like button before you go. I hope you all have a great day weekend on monday we'll be back with the weekend recap for the usmnt abroad i want to thank you all very much for watching thank you everyone that became a member of the channel as well if you want to join the member of tactical manager tv to get extra videos extra perks and to support the channel go join thank you very much for watching everyone and have a great day